Hi everyone, so I want to show you the differences between Google Calendar and the Apple Calendar. I'm just going to go ahead and call it the Apple Calendar. I really don't know if they even have a name like iCloud Calendar or iPhone Calendar. So it just makes it so much easier to just call it Apple Calendar. Um, I've been using both of them for years, uh, mainly more the Google Calendar. That's my main calendar. But I'm going to go ahead and show you the difference between the two and also the similarities that they both have. So when you open up Google Calendar, you come to the main page. And as I've said in a previous video, I use Google Calendar. I have multiple calendars in here. I also use the reminders and tasks. So this is what Google Calendar on the web looks like. When you open up the Apple Calendar, you have to go to iCloud.com. And then it you should come on to a splash page if it ever wants to pop up, or I guess it actually logged me out. So let me go ahead and log in. And so you just have to go to calendar. And as you see, I don't really have that many calendars on Google, on iCloud. I don't use the iCloud calendar. Um, I use the app, the app, but I don't use the actual calendar. So as you see, when I go in here, there is really not much in here, but it opens up a compared to the Google Calendar that I have set for seven days, so I could just see seven days onward, this opens up to just the current week. And there is no way to actually set it like the Google Calendar, which is starting from, the, to, from today's date, seven days onward. If I wanted to have something similar to the Apple Calendar, I would just put the week and it would just show the week. I have it starting on Monday. For me, the week starts on Monday. So I can have it that way. But for me, preference, I prefer to have it seven days. So that's one thing that, as you can see, Google Calendar gives you a bit more functionality than the, the Apple Calendar. So um, with the Apple Calendar, um, the other thing that you can do is that so you can go to this little I always forget what do you call those? I guess like a nut or a wrench or whatever. I don't know. Um, and then you can create new calendars. If let's say you're sharing the calendar with someone, I used to have one with my kids, but they never ever looked at it. So I was, so there was really no point in having it. So I just decided to delete it. And now I need, you know, and you just have to click edit and then hit the, the delete. I just feel like this one, like, um, they need to do more work on the UI because it's a little, it's to me, it's a little clunky. Like you have to basically like guess where things are like, oh, that's how I create a calendar and oh, edit. I mean, it probably it's apparent of what it is, but for someone who doesn't know, I would go here and click the plus sign, but it would be, that's to create an event in the new, in the same, in your already existing calendar. For Google, um, you know, as I said, I use Google primarily, so that's why you see like a thousand calendars here. I don't have my work calendar open uh, because there are things that populate from my work calendar that, you know, I shouldn't really be showing anybody. But as you see, I have other calendars, which are calendars that I've subscribed to, and then you just have to click the plus sign and then select, um, I usually do from URL to select uh, the ca other calendars that I'm subscribed to. And then the calendars that I've created are up here. And the, so to create an event, you just have to click create. And then here you can also create like a reminder or task. I've been kind of moving away from tasks because honestly, they, it, it, it still needs more functionality needed added to it. I keep saying that for everything. I act like I'm like this, um, like someone who will build the perfect application, but in my mind, I tend to think I would. <laughs> I'm just messing around. I know no application is perfect, 
even as much time and effort that everybody puts in it, there will never be an application that has everything 100% what anybody wants. So that is something to always note that the, the developers um, and the entire team, which includes usually testers, management, um, BAs and stuff like that, they're, do they're really trying their best. So just be patient and see what they will build eventually. Um, and as I showed in a previous video here, you can access Google Keep, which is kind of, if you'd never heard of Google Keep, it's like Evernote or like uh, OneNote. And then their task is here as well. So for integrations, both of them are on IFT. Um, there is a peer, I, you know, as I said before, is that peer is there, but I've had issues with it, so I don't really use it anymore. But um, as you see, both of them are able to be um, have in, have if integrations and um, there's also 365 I'll do a separate video on that because I only use 365 for work so it isn't something that I'm using for my personal and work life um, so with Google Google has more integrations the one thing I do like about Google is that it does work with if and then it also works with notion which is the other one of the other apps that I use and I was using Trello which is also a great tool and that also integrated with Google Calendar um, iOS doesn't really have that many integrations it does have integrations as you saw in if like they they do have some integrations with if I believe that in order for this to work you might have to add it to your iPhone but I, I am not 100% but um, there are some integrations on there, but mainly for between the two, Google has more integrations because it's not just with if, but it also works with other applications like Notion or um, Trello or any of those as well. So with tasks and reminders, if you wanted a, a calendar application that has everything all encompassing, Google Calendar beats it because it does have reminders and tasks, even though Google, please make up your mind. And then um, for the Apple Calendar, it's separate from their reminders. So you can't see your reminders in the calendar. I wonder if um, Apple will ever do that, but for now it's separate. Um, I don't really use reminders. They have improved it a lot since I've started since I got an iPhone, but it, I still prefer other um, to do applications. But as you see, they're separated while Google Calendar, you can see your it reminders as well as your tasks. So I'll go to the Apple version first. So this is when you first, when you first open the app, this is what you see is today's day. And it's very color coded, which I like, and it's easy to visually see the difference between the different calendar events. Um, you can add through your settings the different calendars from different providers. Like my work one is we have we use 365, so that's Outlook that we're using. You can also use like Google. I have my Google ones on there. Um, my school one as well as my iCloud. And then you have like additional ones that you can, that you've, that I've subscribed to, which are like TripIt, Canvas, um, Bands in Town and whatever else. Um, so that is quickly what the Apple calendar. One thing I do like about it is if I'm going to an event and I know like what the address is, I can go to travel time, select travel time, and then it can tell me, it'll tell me like how long it will take me to get there. And then it'll add the travel time and then you can change your alert. So then if you want to be notified, like five minutes before your, your travel time, then it will do so. And I just realized that this is pretty, this is farther than I thought. I thought it was like next door. So now I know that I need to give myself extra time to get there. I did not know that it was that, that it was 25 minutes away. I thought it was right next to me. Anyway, um, so that's 
really like why the one thing I do love about the Apple calendar is the fact that it will add the travel time that it estimated for you. And then you know that if you have to go somewhere, oh crap, I got to leave, you know, 25 minutes before then other calendar apps that don't do that. And then you have to do it in another application to find out how long it like you have to give how much time you have to give yourself to get to that location. So that's one thing I like about this one. Um, for a Google Calendar, it has additional. So when I open it up, this is the view that I get. I actually like this view better because it's kind of like my to-do task. So that's pretty cool. Um, because I use a lot of the Google functionality, that's the reason I use both calendars because I like the fact that with Google, I have my reminders. I also have the goals. So a goal is like different things that you want to make sure that you remain consistent with. So I use like the cleaning one. I use one for um, working out. And one thing I like about the working out, if I can remember, if I remember which one it is, is this, okay. The one thing I like about the working out one is the fact that it connects to your eye health. So then you, your health app, I said eye health, but it's your health app. And then it will track your health app. Well, it will sync to your health app. And then you don't have to worry about going to, I mean, I use my fitness pal and then I have a Fitbit, but you don't have to worry about doing that because it already connects us to health app. And then that will also send that information to like my fitness pal or, um, whatever other like health app that you use. I already have a workout one, so I'm just gonna go ahead and delete it. I just wanted to show you what it looks like um, before I click out of here, but I like it. Um, the only thing I don't like is, I mean, it's really minor, is the fact that like it doesn't sync to the web app. So the thing that sucks about it is, let's say that you decide you don't want to use Google Calendar anymore and you're like, I'm done, I don't want to use this, or you use, I decided to use another calendar app. Well, <clears throat> on the Google Calendar on, on the web, you can't remove these goals, which I think is really stupid. But, and then the other thing that really upsets me too is the fact that you can't modify them. Like, yeah, you can, like you can modify them, but you can only modify like, one at a time, which I think is really silly too. Like you can't just modify like, because usually it's a recurring, um, it's basically a recurring reminder, but you can't remove it because you have to do it through the app, which is minor, like I said, but for me who finds th these type of things annoying, it is annoying. But again, you know, just install the app again, delete the goals you don't want to do anymore and then if you want to remove the app just remove it but what i do is i usually like i mainly use the apple calendar so i have that here and then i have the google calendar in a productivity folder so i still have it but it's running in the background because i usually just use the google calendar mainly just to like modify goals and things like that so that is the difference between the two calendars and the reason I use both, mainly I use the Apple calendar, but just the Google calendar I use for like little things like reminders and um, the goals. I wish that Google would come out with the reminders app, but they still haven't. And like I said- Well, those are the differences between uh, Google calendar and Apple calendar that I found and also the similarities. Please let me know if you use one of these calendars and which one you prefer, or if there is another one that you use. I have heard that Fantastical, it's a paid, calendar. I heard that one is a really good calendar. I think it's $2.99, but don't quote me on that. Um, and also let me know if you want to see, start seeing more videos like this, and I'll make sure to create them for you. So I hope that everybody has a good day, a good week, and I'll talk to you soon.